Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are starting a new session. We will be taking classes on uh, economics for class 12. So to start with, we will be dealing with the microeconomics topics uh, from today onwards. And we are starting with the first chapter that is introduction. With that, let's move on to the chapter and see the discussion. So here we could see that uh, the first session in chapter one introduction of microeconomics deal with a simple economy. What is a simple economy all about or what does simple economy consist of? We are going to see that. Okay. So we know, we could see that uh, there can be a society or there will be a society. And this society is something which is consist of a collection of individuals. It is a collection of individuals or a group of individuals that would make a society or a group of people would uh, go would form what is known as population or economy. And these people, uh, each and every individual in the economy, they they have different needs and wants, and they may need a lot of goods as well as they may need a lot of services. And these goods and services, for example, they may need some clothing. Uh, people may need shelter, they may need transport, etc. And no individual in the society has all these things that he or she needs. A, a person uh, in an economy is not able to cultivate all the crops that he or she needs. He is not able to um, cultivate everything that he or she needs. So every individual would be having some amount of uh, some few things. And what about the rest of the things that he or she wants? He would be buying these things from the market, right? So just consider the case of a family farm. So this uh, family farm, uh, when I say family farm, what I mean is that a plot of land where some grains would be grown and the family members altogether would be having some uh, farming equipments with them. And they might be having uh, some other kinds of uh, irrigation facilities in order to deal with their cultivation. And the labor services in these farms uh, would be given by the family members since it is a family farm. Now, I'm giving you another example. Just take the case of a weaver. Okay. And this weaver might be having some yarn with him. He might be having some cotton with him. And uh, he might, in some cases, ha having some instruments which is required to weave the cloth. So what about uh, the case of this family farm and weaver? A family farm, the members of this family farm would need, uh, they need several, several products as well as services apart from the grain that they cultivate. And in the case of weaver also, we could see that the weaver is actually weaving cloth. That doesn't mean that weaver could live a life with cloth alone. He needs several other facilities in life. He needs several other aspects or several other product, products in life. So what can be the situation in this kind of an economy? Let's see what is going to happen. So uh, we can see that these people are decision making uh, units. So when I say decision making units, we often refer to consumers and producers. These people are making their own decisions. So, uh, in this context, uh, these decision making units like the family uh, farm, the weaver, etc., they would be producing some goods or some service by using the available resources. And they will be using a part of the produce to obtain many goods and services that he or she needs. The farmer uh, would be selling uh, the crops, extra crops that he would be cultivating. Some crops that he would be cultivating would be used for his household consumption, but the remaining crops is actually sold in the market and the farmer would be getting some money. And with that money, he would be purchasing those other things he needs. And in the case of weaver, he would be, he would be actually uh, weaving clothes and uh, he would be using certain clothes which is uh, needed by him and the rest of it would be sold in the market and he would be getting money and with that money he would be able to get the goods and services from the market uh, that he or she needs. So that would be the case which we could see in the uh, usual economy. Here 
we could say that uh, the family uh, farm and in that family farm the family is actually forced to take a decision or a choice between the different goods and services that are available so it could have more of a good or service by giving up some amount of other good or service so just take the case of this example if the family wants to build a bigger house okay the family is uh, trying to go for a bigger house so in that case it should definitely give up some idea of having a new plot of land so the family has to choose between a bigger house and a new plot of land because the money that is available with the family is fixed or else just think about a situation that uh, the family is planning to give better education to their children so here also if the family has to incur some expense for getting education for their children it has to give up some luxuries in life again this this decision uh, between certain choice this happens mainly because the income of the family uh, is fixed simultaneously the family cannot go for a bigger house and arable land it would be having some money in, with it and it can either go for a bigger house or go for arable land not both of them so i ha i have just given you an example to see uh, the income that we have with us could be having some uh, fixed nature we don't have unlimited income with us the income that we have is fixed but the uh, what the needs and wants of people these are very much unlimited so this is not only the case with one individual this is the case with all the other individuals in the society so everyone would be facing what is known as scarcity of resources and this is also known as shortage of resources and for this shortage we have to see that we have, we should make adjustments in the fulfillment of our needs and wants every individual in the society would be engaged in the production of some or the other good in the market in the market so that means that nobody is able to produce everything that he or she needs in the market and we should understand that there has to be some compatibility between what people in the society collectively want to have and what they produce and this is always seen in society just take the case of an example okay the family is producing some corn and the total amount of corn which is produced by the family along with the other farming units in the economy this is something we should match the total amount of corn that people in the society or economy collectively would like to consume what is the case if the people in the society uh, do not wish to consume as much as uh, uh, the family units are capable to produce or capable of producing so this family units must be uh, producing some corn but what if the society is not uh, ready to take all the corns produced by the fam uh, produced by the economy in uh, in totality so in that case we could see that a part of the resource uh, which is used for uh, corn production can be used for some other uh, production or else what would happen if the family uh, or the society want more corn compared to what the farming farming units is producing collectively so that means that we have to take some resources which was earlier used for some other production in order to produce more corn so earlier there was less corn production and some other uh, product was also produced in the market now you have to switch some resources from uh, some other products production to corn production because the society is in need of more corn so this is not only with respect to the corn and other services in the society this is something which we can applicate apply to all the resources and uh, goods and services in the society reallocation is something that is very much common so why uh, do we have to 
face these kinds of problem this is because the resources in our society are scarce and uh, when we compare the resources in the society with the needs and wants that we have we should see that the resources are scarce but the needs and wants of people are very much high that is why we have to allocate the resources and allocation of resources in a society this is something that would help us to go for a combination of different different goods and services and the goods and services that we produce in this manner will have to be distributed to the individuals <coughs> there comes a role of distribution we have to see that Uh, the present society where we live it's a very complex society or the economy in which we live is a complex society so that is where we have to go for allocation of the limited resources and also we have to go for the distribution of the goods which are produced by using these resources let's understand the central problems of an economy so the section 1.2 of the ncert textbook deal with the central problems of the economy we should first of all understand that the three basic activities that we could say in our economy are production exchange and consumption and these economic activity would be done in the uh, scenario of scarcity of resources and scarcity of resources is something that would give rise to another problem which is known as problem of choice the scarcity of resources means that we have to use resources uh, for different different needs and wants because this is the resources in an economy would be having some competing usages it means that the same resource can be used for one need or the other need so every society has to decide how to use these kinds of resources which are scarce so this is something which would give rise to uh, the problems of an economy every economy whether it is underdeveloped economy whether it is developed economy whether it is uh, emerging market economy so every economy would be facing with three basic problems so the first problem is what to produce or what what to, what is produced or in what quantities what to produce and in what quantities we have to see that every economy should be able to see how much of different goods and services to be produced so it should see whether it should go for more food production or more clothing production or more housing production or should it go for luxury commodities or whether it should give more resources for production of agriculture goods or should it go for more production of industrial products so this is something which every society should plan and decide and also implement having understood what to produce now we have to see how are these goods produced or else we can answer uh, or else we can uh, consider the question how to produce we could see that there have been many many methods available in order to produce a certain commodity either we can go for more labor to produce some commodity or else we could use more capital or more machines to produce a commodity anyway we have to use the available technology for the production of the goods we should have in the economy so this is what is understood when we say how to produce or how are these goods produced having understood what to produce and how to produce now let's see the next and final question the final question is for whom are these goods produced or whom to produce so who will be getting uh, this goods or it is for whom that the economy is producing whatever be uh, the production the economy the economy should make sure that it is distributed among the individuals but here there can be a problem that some people would be getting more of the good commodity and some people would be getting less and here the society needs to answer who is getting more and who is getting less at least everyone should be getting some minimum amount of 
the commodity produced in the market. And this is something the government in the economy should make sure of. So, this is something that has to do with the problem of allocation of scarce resources. We could see that the scarce resources in our economy is scarce, but we do have a large needs and wants. So, what we have to do is that we have to go for allocation of the scarce resources and also we should go for distribution of the goods which are produced by using these resources. This And this is something which is answered by the central problems of our economy. Having said all these kinds of things, let's see the next concept that is a very important concept, production possibility frontier. And this is also known as production possibility curve. We could understand that resources in the economy is always limited. Or else we do have scarce resources in the economy. But at the same time, the same resource can be used for different different uses. Or else we can see resources have alternative uses. For the same reason, every society has to make a decision regarding how much of every resource is to be used for the production of commodity A and commodity B. Or else, every society should decide how much of each of the resource is to be used for the production of different goods and services. So, this is something which is known as allocation of resources, allocation of scarce resources to produce different, different commodities. Allocation of scarce resources is something that we have to uh, see when we go for different combination of goods and services. And it is possible to allocate resources in different, different ways. And whenever we go for uh, different possibilities of resource allocation, we achieve what is known as different mixes of goods and service production. The collection of all the possible combination of goods and services could be produced from a given amount of resources as well as what is known as technological knowledge. And this is something which is explained by the production possibility set of the economy. Let's see the production possibility set. Here in this example that I am, I am going to give you and this is the same example that is uh, given in the NCRT textbook. Okay, so just consider an economy and this economy is producing corn and cotton. Okay, these are the two products that are produced in this economy. So this is a hypothetical example to uh, make you understand the way in which a society could allocate its resources. That doesn't mean that every society would be using corn and cotton or every society would be producing corn and cotton only. That we know that in a globalized world, we are using certain products produced by some other countries and the products produced by India is used not only by Indians but also by other people or the people of foreign countries. And also we can say that uh, uh, we are producing not only two commodities but we pr produce a lot of commodities. And here you could see that uh, this table would be giving some different combinations of corn and cotton that the economy would be able to produce. That possibilities are given as possibility A to possibility E. And in possibility A, uh, 0 corn and 10 cotton is produced. Possibility B, 1 unit of corn and 9 unit of cotton is produced. Possibility C means uh, 2 units of corn and uh, 7 units of cotton produced. And possibility D means uh, 3 units of corn and 4 units of cotton produced. And here uh, possibility E, 4 units of corn and 0 units of cotton is produced. So what would happen if the society would use all its resources for the production of corn alone? In that case, you can see that the maximum corn that can be produced is 4 units. Now, or else, what would happen if the society would use in its entire resources for the production of cotton? So, in that case, it can be 10 units. So, you have to see that whenever the society is producing maximum uh, cotton by using all its resources, it is producing 0 units of corn. And in the case, when it is produced, when it is using all the resources for the production of corn, it is able to produce 4 units of corn, but it cannot produce at least a single 
unit of cotton it would be producing just zero unit of cotton so in between these two possibilities we do have several other possibilities or uh, which shows the different combinations of corn and cotton so we can actually use what we could see in the figure by uh, by considering a curve okay so a b c d e which you could see in the figure could be plotted in a graph where your x axis would see cotton as uh, uh, corn and y axis would measure cotton so here you can see that uh, whenever you increase cotton production you have to reduce corn production just compare the case of uh, these two points that is b and c okay so at b you would be producing this much of cotton and only this much of corn is produced what would happen when it comes to c so when it comes to c actually you are increasing the production of corn at the same time you are reducing the production of cotton that means that whenever you have to increase the production of one commodity you have to reduce the production of the other commodity and also you could see that any point which is on or below on the ppc so that the something which the society can produce points a b c d and e and all the points which lie inside this curve this is something every society is able to produce because this is something that can be produced with available resources so this is known as a production possibility frontier which would give rise to the different combination of corn and a uh, cotton which could be produced by the society by utilizing its full resources or full utilization of resources but if you are inside the production possibility curve what would happen is that you are not using the entire resources that you have if you are at any of these points a b c d or e you are actually using the entire resources all the resources are fully utilized but if you are at some point inside the curve that means that you are not using the available resource the use resources are using in a wasteful fashion or you are going for some under employment of resources so if we have more goods in the economy what we have to see is that that is not possible with the given technology only one of the good can be increased uh, and if that is being increased you have to reduce the quantity of production of the other good so there is always a cost of having a little more than of one good in terms of the amount of the other good that you have to forego and what is this known as this is known as opportunity cost every economy would be dealing with different different possibilities of production and out of this the society could choose one possibility of production and one of the central problems of the economy is to choose from these possibilities these different different production possibilities available to the economy with that we move on to section 1.3 where we have to give uh, an idea of economic activities and organization of the state we should see that the economy would be having its own objectives and the market uh, would be going for its own objective and the government would be going for its own objective so this is how we could classify the kind of economic organization there can be the difference between two types of economic organization one is where we have a centrally planned economy so when we have a centrally planned economy we could see that there exists what is known as a central authority or a government here all the decisions regarding production all the decision regarding exchange all the decision regarding consumption everything would be taken by the government only the government here try to attain a, a particular allocation of resources and the government would be trying to make certain decision that is desirable for the entire society and the central authority of the government would be trying to intervene in the market in order to ensure that there is equitable distribution of good final goods and service in the market in order to ensure that is happening in the market the government would be intervening in the market having said about the central authority and the centrally planned economy let's see the next kind of economic organization which deals with the market economy 
So in this case, the all the economic activities is something that is organized through the market. The market forces on demand and supply will deal with the uh, market economy. So we know that a market is an institution which would be organizing the free um, interaction of individual uh, who would be dealing with their own economic activities. So here uh, all the goods and service in the market would come with what is known as a price. And in this kind of market system, uh, it is the price that would decide uh, along with this demand and supply mechanism what to produce, how to produce and uh, whom to be consuming. So let's understand now the difference between positive economics and normative economics which plays a very important role in the arena of uh, differentiation of economics. So there can be different different ways of solving the central problems of economy and uh, here we have to give importance to positive economics and normative economics. So there should be a distinction which had to be brought out uh, between positive economic analysis and normative economic analysis. Okay. So in the case of positive economic analysis, what we try to see is that what is the, uh, what it is. So a question like what it is, is answered by uh, positive economics. On the other hand, when it comes to normative economics, a question like what it should be is answered by normative economics. In the case of positive economics, we study how the different mechanisms in the economy function. Whereas in the case of normative economics, we start, try to understand whether these mechanisms are actually desirable or not. So having said so, let's move on to the important concept in the area of uh, economics that is differentiation between microeconomics and macroeconomics. So you might be knowing the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics. For those people who are not aware about the same, I am going to tell you. So in the case of microeconomics, we would be trying to deal with the behavior of individual economic units. Okay. So a single consumer, a single firm, all these are seen at microeconomics. So here, here we'll be looking into the case of price and quantity determination in a single market. But whereas in the case of macroeconomics, we will be trying to understand the economy as a whole. Okay. So in the case of macroeconomics, we will be considering everything in aggregate form. So we'll be seeing total output, we'll be seeing total employment, we'll be seeing aggregate price level, everything. So here individual aspect is not considered. So that's all about the chapter one of um, NCRT textbook class 12. So I request you to like, share and subscribe to this channel for more videos and you can be a part of my telegram channel and telegram group. Uh, your support is very much uh, essential for um, me to do videos regarding the topics like these. So I'm requesting you to subscribe to the channel and also I'm requesting you to like, share also the channel. So that's it. Thank you for watching.